In an earlier episode I did on what makes Elon Musk so unique, linked in the description and above, I mentioned that one problem Elon Musk hasn't yet attacked is food security. A viewer kindly pointed out that while Elon himself hasn't done so, his brother Kimball has. Talk about an overachieving family. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All. As most of you know, the food web is a crazy and often very inefficient way of getting groceries. I remember, for example, when I was in Hawaii, which, you know, can grow just about anything. <laughs> I was looking at mangoes and papayas in the grocery store, and I was shocked to see that they were from Mexico. That's almost a sick joke, but I think it's because store chains have deals with growers and they have to use their products even if the local climate can support locally grown produce. Or if I go to the grocery store here in Georgia, I might see kiwi from New Zealand rather than a place like California, which can also grow kiwi. Think about the number of steps and the distances involved to get mangoes from Mexico to Hawaii or kiwi literally halfway around the world from New Zealand to Georgia. As the video that's linked in the description states, food travels an average of 1,500 miles or about 2,400 kilometers to get to our stores. Of course, all of these problems are very much first world problems, we here have something incredibly unique in history. We can actually get a kiwi from New Zealand in the middle of our winters. That has simply never been possible before. But what of countries that can't afford the costs and logistics to please the palates of their citizens? They are in situations often where even providing the basics to less fortunate citizens is very spotty or even impossible. And this is without a doubt a, a horrible ethical and moral situation. Even in the United States, one of the richest countries in the world, food security is a huge issue for those who have little money. And the land that is used heavily for farming needs massive fertilizer additions in order to keep being viable as it's being overused. All the while, grocery stores, restaurants, and people at home in the United States throw out nearly 40% of what is grown, which is just unbelievable. So land, transportation, money, and distribution are massive problems for an ever-growing population. What can be done? Well, Kimball Musk has a really great idea, reusing old shipping containers to grow food near where it is needed and doing it in a three-dimensional fashion. So just like Elon Musk is working three-dimensionally for the boring company, Kimball Musk is working three-dimensionally to grow food above the ground instead of on it. In a test farm in Brooklyn, New York, Musk has converted shipping containers into indoor farming where food can be grown all year. As a quick aside, the project is called Square Roots, because of course it is. The Musks and their engineering math humor. <laughs> so each container, amazingly enough, is the equivalent of about a two-acre farm, which is amazing. The density of growth for a 3D container is much higher than that for of a flat 2D land-based farm. Inside the containers, Vertical growing columns and flat hydroponic bays combined with heat and air conditioning and also spectrally tuned light pro to provide the correct amount for growth allow the plants to grow year round. As the growth is aero and hydroponic, it uses no soil and only tiny amounts of water per container. Also, by using 3D farming in shipping containers, the farm can be placed in an unused parking lot or part of one rather than needing acres and acres of land, which is great for city growing. And of course, by being contained, plants can grow well outside the locality's growing season. For example, lettuce, kale, etc. are being grown in the dead of winter at well below freezing temperatures in New York. The containers are 8 by 40 feet for about 320 square feet of space or 30 square meters. And as noted, annually this very compact space produces the equivalent of between 1 and 2 acres of flat land. Water is provided to the plants directly to the roots via an irrigation system. The water is first mixed with nutrients the plants would normally get from the soil, and then it is fed to the top of an irrigation system. Gravity then pulls it down and it flows past both vertical and horizontal growing areas. As the water is then recycled from the tanks and from the air, very little is lost, and thus not much water is needed beyond the initial tanking up to run the farm on a daily basis. Thus, the farm uses 95% less water than an outdoor flat farm. You really think about is water usage. So in these systems, water drips down through the irrigation system. It's mixed with the right level of nutrients. Gravity does its thing and feeds the plant. And then the water is all captured in a tray at the bottom and is then recirculated. In fact, this whole farm runs on about eight gallons of water a day, which is like less than your shower. 
and that's 95% less water than an outdoor farm would use. It's like you have an entire oh, forest in here. I love These it. look good. This is like the first time in a while that I've been craving a salad. In a moment, let's talk about energy. But first, if you enjoy this video, definitely like it so that other people can find it. And please do subscribe if you enjoy this kind of content. And definitely subscribe because we're getting really, really close to our 10,000 subscriber goal. In fact, we may hit it before this video is even released. And if we do before the end of the year, I've got something fun to give away. Also, a huge shout out to my Patreon patrons. You guys are amazing and it's been wonderful, all of your support and everything. I would like to give a new Patreon patron shout out today to Richard Foy. Hello there. Also, as always, a big thank you to Zenly Music for doing the intro and conclusion music. He's a wonderful artist, so definitely check him out on Instagram or YouTube. And if you're in the market for a new Tesla, definitely check out our referral link. If you use that link and purchase a car, you get a thousand free supercharger miles, and so do we, which is cool. So what about electricity? It seems this would be the farm's Achilles heel. It would need lots of electricity for both growing light and for heating and cooling. However, by using high-efficiency LED lights that hang directly in front of the plants and which are tuned to the portions of the spectrum plants need, in other words, red and blue plus a bit of UV, energy is targeted at plant growth without wasting any energy on unneeded light frequencies. Still, however, 50% of the cost of these farms is in electricity. Of course, a big potential, and one that Elon himself could very well help with, is installing local solar, perhaps even on the roof of these things, to massively reduce energy grid needs. With enough solar plus Powerwall batteries, it could be possible to even make each container a self-sustaining entity. And that could be shipped easily around the world since these containers are literally the shipping containers used everywhere. Or of course, one could build these using scrapped ones locally, using instructions and equipment provided by a company or a philanthropic organization. For sure, this solution is not going to solve the world's food crisis by itself, but it is a fascinating and relatively cost-effective way to localize food, which removes much of the transport and logistics costs, opens more efficient growing solutions to poor areas of the world that don't have good farming soil or conditions, and simply makes food better for you because it's eaten much sooner after being harvested. And if Elon and Kimball Musk team up and get integrated solar and batteries working, these containers could become self-sufficient farms that can be placed anywhere in a city or suburb to allow local food to be grown and eaten in the most efficient manner possible. Here's to the Musk brothers continuing to change the world. Okay, I hope you found this episode interesting and informative. If you did, definitely like and subscribe for more of this. And also, please, as always, ask me questions in the comments or at my email address, which is drknowitallknows at gmail.com. Till next time, bye-bye.